So I came up with a way to test if you've got a bad optus spark, bad cap and rotor, or if it's your coil or your ICM that's bad. What I've got here is I have a 1993 Camaro Z28. I've been having weak spark issues. I've been getting a yellow, orange spark. Uh, car won't fire. It won't. It won't. Won't even spit or sputter anymore. Uh, before this problem, I was having uh, it would start, run, backfire out of the intake. Uh, had no power. You couldn't rev it, or else it would backfire through the intake. Not bad, but it was it was enough to where you you could hear it, but it wasn't enough to sound like a gunshot. Um, what I've done is I went and I, I went and I've gotten from a junkyard a 95 to 97 uh, vented Optus Spark with the short harness here. Um, and so I was trying to think of a way that I could test and see if it really was my Optus Spark that was bad. This is a known good unit. Uh, it ran, uh, the car that it came in on, the engine ran, but it had an engine knock. Uh, so obviously I took the part. What I've done is I've taken the wire from the coil right here that hooks down in the, into where it would normally hook to. It goes from the coil to the Optus Spark. And I've connected it here. I've taken the Optus Spark short harness and I've connected it to the car up there. Then I took uh, the spark plug out of my motor, which is right here, and I took the number one cylinder plug wire off of my motor. And I connected it to the number one spot. Now, what this is supposed to represent is an Optus, is an Optus Spark with the key on, engine off, not turning over. Now I've taken just a regular old cord corded DeWalt drill, put a socket on it, I put some I put some uh, Gorilla Tape around this so the socket will fit over it snug and not slip around it and it won't damage the shaft of this optic spark. What you do is you stick this over here and if you watch the spark plug, you can see it has a nice hot blue and white spark. This is a way you can test the OptiSpark 2 without having to actually tear your entire engine apart. If you look, my water pump is still intact. All everything is to where. If this was a good car, if this was a good OptiSpark, I could connect, I could connect everything back up with the key and it would run. So it's just an idea to tell you that, to show you that yes, this is a good working way to test. And now everybody doesn't have to. Uh, if you go by this guide, you don't have to actually wonder if the Optus Spark you're buying from just some average guy off of Craigslist or off of a forum or what have you. You can test it now. In, if you meet up with the person, you can test it now, or you can tell somebody how to test it if they have the means. If they have an LT1 sitting at home, uh, I will revise this and try and figure out a way to test them without having a. Uh, and L you ha without you having to have an LT1 vehicle, but I figured I'd just share this and try and get you know some of you out there that's having this problem a little bit of help. But uh, now at least I know that I have a delivery problem from Spark coming from the cap out to the cylinders. I'm probably going to try and take the distributor cap and rotor button off of this distributor here and put it on mine. And yes, the vented Optus Spark cap will work with the non-vented Optus Spark as long as there's a little plastic separator piece in here you have to have the non-vented separator piece to put the distributor cap from the vented Optus Spark on here uh, other than that that's really all you need I'll probably keep this unit as a backup uh, and if I run into any more problems I'll just buy a timing cover and timing gear and from a 95-97 car and swap it over but uh, as far as that goes that's that, that concludes this so thanks